if you were to study your own brain, introspect, how do you think? What's your thinking process like? We'll talk about the writing process of putting it down on paper, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite rigorous and uh, famous at, at uh, Amazon. But how do you, when you sit down, maybe alone, maybe with others, and thinking through this high dimensional space and looking for creative solutions, uh, creative paths forward, is there something you could say about that process? It's such a good question. And I honestly don't know how it works. If I did, <laughs> I would try to explain it. I yeah. know it involves lots of wandering. Yeah. So I, you know, when I sit down to work on a problem, I know I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. So to, to go in a straight line, to be efficient, efficiency and invention are sort of at odds because invention, real invention, not incremental improvement. Incremental improvement is so important in, in every endeavor and everything you do. You have to work hard on also just making things a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about real invention, real lateral thinking. That requires wandering. Mm -hmm. And you have to give yourself permission to wander. I think a lot of people, um, they feel like wandering is inefficient and, should, you know, like when, when I sit down at a meeting, I don't know how long the meeting is going to take if we're trying to solve a problem. Because if I did, I, then I'd already, I could, I'd know there's some kind of straight line that we're drawing to the solution. The reality is we may have to wander for a long time. And I do like group invention. I think there's really nothing more fun than sitting at a whiteboard with a, a number, you know, a group of smart people and, spitballing and coming up with new ideas and objections to those ideas and then solutions to the objections and going back and forth. So like, um, you know, sometimes you wake up with an idea in the middle of the night and sometimes you sit down with a group of people and go back and forth and both things are really pleasurable. Mm -hmm. And when you wander, I think one key thing is to notice a good idea. And to, to to maybe to notice the kernel of a good idea, maybe pull at that string, because I, I don't think uh, good ideas come fully formed. A hundred percent right. In fact, when I come up with what I think is a good idea, and it survives kind of the first level of scrutiny, you know, that I do in my own head, and I'm ready to tell somebody else about the idea, mm -hmm. I will often say, "Look, it is going to be really easy for you to find objections yeah. to this idea." But work with me. There's something there. There's something there. And that is intuition. Yeah. You, because it's really easy to kill new ideas in the beginning because they do have so many, so many easy objections to them. So you need to, uh, you need to kind of forewarn people and say, look, I know it's going to take a lot of work to get this to a fully formed idea. Let's get started on that. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. So you got that ability to say cosine in you somewhere, after all. <laughs> Maybe not on math. But. In a different domain. Yeah, There are a thousand ways to be smart, by the yeah. way. <laughs> and that is a really, like, when I go around, you know, and, and I meet people, I'm always looking for the way that they're smart. And you find it is, that's one of the things that makes the world so interesting and fun is that it is not it's not like iq is a single yep. dimension there are people who are smart in so such unique ways yeah you just gave me a good response is when somebody calls me an idiot on the internet <laughs> but, you know there's a thousand ways to be smart sir well the, the, they might tell you yeah but there are a million to be ways to be done <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i feel like that's a mark twain quote